Hi guys, this is Tamara. Thank you so much for coming back to my channel. Welcome back. Today we're gonna do something just a little bit different here. And I figured that this might be a very nice way to involve you guys in some of the things that I do behind the scenes. So I was asked by YouTube uh, to participate in a campaign called With Me. It's a campaign that YouTube is leading and the campaign is there to allow creators, mental health professionals, to put a video together about coping skills and the stress that, that we're currently dealing, dealing with in today's society. I think on this channel, um, I've talked a lot about stress. I've also talked a lot about um, coping skills and learning how to change your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. And I will go ahead and post that video up in the card section as we go along so stick around for that because you might like that video um, I give you some skills on how to manage your thoughts feelings and behaviors but in today's video I think I'm going to uh, talk a little bit more about coping skills and I want to talk about uh, the stress response that we go through as human beings but from a mental health perspective my subscribers and followers you guys are all well aware of that but I think that for the rest of the YouTube community hashtag with me I think that um, it's gonna be helpful to them as well so let's go ahead and jump in thank you so much for coming back to my channel for those who are subscribed and for those who are new I encourage you to hit that subscribe button so you can stick around with us and be a part of our validating and growing community I discuss a lot of topics on this channel my specialization tends to be trauma um, so let me introduce myself to you I'll go there first so my name is Tamara and I'm an internationally licensed board certified mental health professional I work primarily with children's families and adults who are dealing with trauma and, and trauma in childhood. To find the best coping skill for you, I think it's best if I explain to you from a physiological perspective, what is stress? Okay, and I'm gonna make this very, very simplified because it can get really complicated and terminology can get pretty um, intricate. So let's start with the brain. So we have what's called the pituitary gland and it is a pea-sized gland that is actually hanging down in the middle of our our brain okay it's like a little pea-sized structure and it hangs down from the the top of the brain and that particular gland usually secretes a stress hormone known as cortisol this stress hormone kickstarts a cascade a cascade of emotional reactions, physiological reactions, and psychological and neurological reactions that changes the chemistry and the responses of our body. Now, when the stress hormone cortisol is released through the body, usually there's a lot of different processes that happens in the brain, but to make this very simplified, our fight or flight mode is automatically kicked on. Now there's two systems that you need to be aware of. One is the central nervous system and two is the autonomic nervous system. Now the central nervous system consists of only two things, the brain and the spinal cord. The brain and that little spine, spinal cord that goes down the vertebrae of your back. That's the brain and the spinal cord. But then the other system, the autonomic nervous system, has control over all our automatic processes in our, in our body, right? Our breathing, our blinking rate, you know, how our heart pumps, the different fluids that flow throughout our bodies. The autonomic nervous system controls those automatic processes, okay? Within the autonomic nervous system is two more systems. One, the sympathetic nervous system, and two, the parasympathetic nervous system. Now the sympathetic nervous system is something that I regard as the gas pedal, okay? And you'll, you'll soon find out why. The other part of our fight or flight response, the parasympathetic nervous system, I regard as the brake, and you'll soon find out why. 
let's start with the gas pedal. So the gas pedal, the sympathetic nervous system is the part of our, our system, our stress response that speeds up everything in our body when we are faced with some kind of threat. And sometimes our sympathetic nervous system is triggered when there is no threat, like in PTSD. If you, for example, fought in a war, um, or you had a terrible car crash, or you were molested as a child, um, or you were raped, or you endured some other kind of major trauma, your brain plays tricks on you. And what happens is central nervous system dominance, central nervous system dominance. And that's when the central nervous system becomes so dominant that it's hard for you to control your body's responses to whatever threat you think is around you. Whether that threat is present or not doesn't matter. It's how the brain is interpreting your reality and your environment. Okay, so the, the sympathetic nervous system is the gas pedal. Everything in your body speeds up based on what your brain determines as a threat to your safety and your survival. Heart rate goes up, thoughts start to get scattered and they may um, you know, get confused or they may you know, be at a, a speeding rate. Uh, you also have sweating, heart palpitations, um, other things in your body begin to shut down because you don't need it to survive, such as, you know, hunger, right? So your stomach actually shuts down. You're no longer hungry at that point, okay? Um, you don't have to urinate or go to the bathroom. That gets kind of like shut off as well by the stress response. Your main goal in that mode of feeling like you are being threatened by something in your environment, and it could be stress, it could be a person, it could be an attitude, it could be an environment, it could be anything, a sound, a sight, whatever, whatever your brain interprets as a threat, okay, your body reacts to that, your body responds to that. It doesn't need to eat, it doesn't need to sleep, it doesn't need to go to the bathroom, it needs to run, it needs to hide, it needs to protect itself. Now we go, when we go to the parasympathetic nervous system, the brake pedal mode, that's when hunger returns, heart rate goes down, sweating decreases, right? Your thoughts may become more organized and structured. And then on top of that, you may start to feel like you have to go to the bathroom at that point, right? You may also get a little bit hungry. You may the threat is gone. And so you're in brake pedal mode. So your body is pumping the brakes. And now you are able to relax and calm down and function like you need to function. These are two important systems. And these symptoms, these symptoms, <laughs> excuse me, these systems is what I'm trying to say, actually helps you understand what happens to your body if you have PTSD, if you have generalized anxiety disorder, and if you have major depressive disorder, because sometimes when you're depressed, anxiety creeps in, and it's sometimes hard to, to differentiate between the two, depression and anxiety. So these two systems and learning how they work and how stress hormone can kickstart that process is extraordinarily important. So let me explain the two kinds of coping that I encourage my clients to focus on. One is the psychological and emotional coping. Two is physiological or physical coping, all right? Emotional and psychological coping will consist of doing all things that brings you emotional and psychological comfort. Listening to music, taking a warm hot bath, right? Um, eating something delicious that you like, looking through a photo album at positive memories, right? Uh, visiting a gravesite of someone that you lost, someone that you love. Um, I actually lost my grandmother this year in April during the thick of coronavirus. And, you know, thankfully she did not have coronavirus, uh, but she was very, very sick. And um, um, she had an undiagnosed condition and it was very, very hard on my family, very, very hard on, on me as well. Um, during that time, I found myself coping with that by going to her gravesite every Friday, and I still go just to say hi, just to you know, um, you know, leave some flowers and let her know I still love you and I'm still thinking of you all the time. So sometimes going to a gravesite is a nice way to cope emotionally and psychologically. Um, spending time with friends and you know, seeing them over FaceTime, texting them, doing group chats, group texts reading a, a book that you love, watching a Lifetime movie. I used to do that as a teenager when I was stressed. It worked a lot until they started coming out with movies where, you know, stalking was the topic and domestic violence. And then I thought, okay, this is not good for my stress response at all. But some people find them interesting. They feel like they're 
really getting their mental juices going. So find a good, you know, television show to watch or a good movie to watch and get engulfed in, you know. Those are psychological and emotional coping skills. Now, physical coping skills would consist of exercise, yoga, meditation, swimming, um, cross country, tennis, basketball, football, any kind of sports. You can also do physical coping by washing your car, dance, Zumba. That's my favorite thing to do on the weekend. I love dancing Zumba. Hip hop dance is another thing that I do. Um, you can also go to a mall and walk. These are all positive ways to engage in coping skills. And don't just think that coping skills are things that make you feel good. They're actually creating long-term changes within the brain. So they're actually changing neurological structures structures in the brain every time you engage in a coping skill you're creating a new awareness for your brain you're saying to your brain this works for me brain so this is what i need to do when my body feels like it is under a a, a ton of stress okay so you want to make sure that you engage in coping skills throughout your week right and you can even schedule it into your schedule Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, or Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, schedule it, commit to it, do it. The more you do it, the better. Um, even if you schedule it multiple times throughout the week, great, that's even better. You want to help your brain learn different ways to cope. Okay, guys, I hope this was helpful to you. Um, it's one of my briefer videos. Uh, but let me know in the comment section below if this could be helpful to you. Thank you so much for being with me today, guys. In this video, I encourage you to give it a thumbs up if it was helpful. And go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you can stick around with us and be a part of our growing and validating community. If you're new to this channel, I welcome you to subscribe. All right, guys, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.